Welcome back to Getting to Blinky 5.0. This is another video about how to finish up the schematic on your Getting to Blinky PCB. Hopefully your first PCB ever or your first PCB with KiCad. So let's, uh, we let first, we left off last time where we were making a schematic symbol. Now we're actually, we dropped that into our schematic. Now we're going to be finishing up that schematic and moving towards a actual physical layout. Now, the thing that I explained in the last video as well is that a schematic is a symbolic representation of all the things we want to hook together. And really, schematics are good for telling you what's hooked to what. So in this case, we have a 555 or 7555, actually. We have a bunch of resistors and capacitors and an LED. And all of these things hooked together, you need to know which pin on each of the individual elements needs to hook to the other one. Because then when we go and draw these lines in layout, the layout lines are defined by these things that we're drawing in the schematic here. So let's go and take a look at some of the lines that we're trying to hook together here. So this is where we left off last time. Uh, and one thing I didn't show actually is that if we now mouse over and we hit E on the component, we can start to see that there's a bunch of different symbol properties. So basically, this is showing the reference number. Obviously, it still hasn't been assigned. That's U question mark. We have the value, which is 7555. But we can also do things like data sheet and footprint. And we'll dive into that as, uh, a little bit later as well. But the other nice thing is we've start, we now have easy ways to turn on and off. Say we want to turn off the reference designator. We can do that here. right? And that's especially important if you do that. You can also do that from the top level. right? You can select the reference, uh, the value or the reference designator and turn it off here. You might say, OK, I don't want this to be visible anymore. But then how do you get it back? Well, you can do that by mousing over the actual symbol element and then saying, no, no, I actually I do want to see these. So that's important. OK, great. So we're back to where we started here. Now what we're going to do is just go and drop in a bunch of stuff. Uh, so let's take a look at how we do that. We're going to hit A to get started. Now we're going to just start filling in. We need two, res three resistors. We need a capacitor, and we need an LED. So let's start with a resistor. You're going to type R to get started. You see that the, everything that has an R in it pops up, but the first one is going to be a uh, resistor. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop a resistor here. We'll get into filling in the details later. I'm going to mouse over and hit C to replicate it. So now we have two resistors. I'm going to hit C again. Now we have three resistors. And now I'm going to go and get a capacitor. Again, once again, hitting A to load up this menu. Or you can go in here and, and place a part like this. Click to, to actually place to get to this menu. We're going to hit C. Now, again, a capacitor pops up. You see it's unpolarized. That just means that it doesn't matter which end you hook it up to. All right. And then finally, we need to get an LED. So I'm going to once again hit A. We're going to type LED. And we're good to go. One other thing we need is a battery holder. So we're just going to type in battery, see what comes up. We're going to say a single cell battery. And we'll put this in here as well. This is going to represent our three volts uh, that will come from a coin cell. Now, what you might be asking here is, well, OK, you need a coin cell holder. I know I need a resistor. How do I, when do I put in the resistor values? When do I put in the type of resistor it is? Is it a through hole resistor? Is it an SMD resistor? This is really showcasing this point, the fact that this is completely symbolic. Right? A resistor, in this case, is just a square. It's really not showing much here. But we assign properties to that square later. Right? In this case, a resistor, we're going to actually use 0805 components, which stands for 0 0.08 inches by 0 0.05 inches. Sorry that it's imperial. Uh, that's just a lot of the standard that comes in the industry still. But that is the package, and, and we're going to assign that later. But we can also assign what the value of the resistor is. In the case here, we're showing a 1K resistor and a 470K resistor. And that's actually how much resistance it has. So these are important things to know here. Uh, so we're going to go in and actually assign these now. Uh, we can do this by right clicking. We could say uh, properties value, right? So we can go here. Or what I like to do, again, hotkeys are kind of my jam. Uh, I'm going to mouse over, hit V, and that allows us to put in the value. So we're going to copy the schematic on the right there put in uh, 1K, and you see it shows up here now. Once again, hit V, put in 470K. And then for uh, C1, we're going to put in uh, one, one microfarad, or oops, that's the reference designator, sorry. I'm going to hit V here. I'm going to put one U. I'm not going to actually add the um, F, right? So sometimes you add, you see UF, sometimes you just see U. Uh, sometimes you see the ohm symbol as well. So actually, this stands for 470K. K and then the omega, the Greek omega, stands for ohms. Uh, these things are left off in this case, so I'm going to leave off the as well. I think that kind of keeps things a little bit tighter. And then once again over here, we're going to go uh, 1K. 
also I'm seeing this as I go through. You see when I click this, the actually the center mouse button. Um, if you see, I I really really recommend that you get a three button mouse. Uh, I, you see I'm scrolling up and down often as well. And when I click the center thing, that's when the green box is showing up. So if you've been confused by that, that's what's happening there. Uh, that actually allows me to. You see as I click it, well. I'm going to click and hold it, but that actually allows me to pan around here. And I really like doing that for, my, uh, for, for navigating here. You see it turns off as I unclick it, really. But I'm clicking the center button and grabbing and moving things around here. OK, so we're going to also, let's also do the value here. We're going to just say CR2032. Like I said, we're going to deal with that a little bit later. But all right, we've now kind of hooked everything together. The one thing we don't have here is what they're showing is zero volts here. We're going to actually say is ground. Right? And ground is a kind of interesting concept, probably outside the scope of what we're doing here. I didn't actually get that, so let's try that once again. So we're going to say ground. And ground is basically, it's, we'll just call it zero volts, kind of like they show here. But ground is, is a way to notate where all of the current's flowing. Because we're going to hook ground to the bottom side of this battery. As it goes through the top side of this battery, all the current comes out, flows through this part, whatever, goes to ground, and then cycles back around to the bottom side of the battery again. Again, this is probably a little bit more of an advanced topic. Uh, you definitely don't need to know electronics in order to do the layout uh, here, but I will put it in a short pitch. In contextual electronics, we teach you we teach you all about the electronics and the, the theory and putting the theory and practice together, really. That's what we really like doing. So anyways, let's go back to here. We're going to just be adding, uh, we're going to just add in the ground for now and hook it all together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit uh, W to start to start running a wire. And then I'm just going to draw the lines here and click to stop. Now what you see here is that uh, the little circle has disappeared on pin 8. And that's because the connection has been made. So I'm going to, again, draw here. You'll see it's going to draw a junction. The circle has disappeared there. A solid circle has appeared here. OK. So we're going to hook up again. We're going to just kind of go through here. Now this is actually a newer function in KiCad. Uh, what you can do is actually draw all the way through a component. And actually, you see that the wires in the middle of the component don't show up anymore. So it basically just kind of hooked those all together. That's new, not new. You know, It's a, it's a nice little feature there. Uh, OK, I'm going to click to finish there. I'm going to these two hook together. Right? So I'm going to hook these two wires together, these two pins together, and then hook it to this part. And then finally, sorry, I've got my... Uh, <laughs> My scroll mouse is different on my laptop than my uh, my desktop here. It's really confusing me. All right, click to start, click to finish. All right, and click to start, click to finish, click to start. And once again, we can draw through these components. I always draw. I I always try and make sure I don't draw a four wire junction like we're showing here. I don't like doing that. I usually like to have a three-wire junction only, just because it makes it easier to, to ensure that this has actually been hooked up here. So if you want to see a lot of angry people online, go and check that out. <laughs> go and look up that term online. Uh, OK. And uh, people who've watched the last video will now say, wait, Chris, why didn't you hook up pin 5? You sure did that in KiCad 4.0. Well, that is true. I hooked it up in KiCad 4.0. Uh, I'm not going to do that. If you'd like to have the advanced version of doing getting to Blinky and uh, all of the troubleshooting and the hand wringing and the uh, on the bench modifications that were needed, you can go and do that. Uh, I, I did hook up pin 5 and then my Blinky did not blink. And so it is true. We're not going to do that here though. So we're going to just do it the good old normal fashion way here. All right, so we've hooked up everything here. I'm going to hit save. You see that the thing turned kind of gray up in the upper left there. And at this point, we actually have a finished schematic. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do what's called ERC. And I, you heard me mention it before. Uh, and what we're going to see, we're going to see some errors here. And that's probably a good thing to get started with. But what this does is basically it makes sure all of the pins that you wanted hooked up are hooked up, or you know, just shows you kind of when there's problems here. Let's hit Run. Annotation required. Yes, so that is the first important thing. You heard me mention this in the last video, and you heard me talk about it as well. You see all these question marks, R question mark, U question mark, C question mark. Basically, we need to give all of these unique numbers and, and unique identifiers so that when, well, just to give you an example here, right? We have three resistors on the board. Yes, they're all, uh, well, there's two of them are the same value now. So, right? so how do you notate that this is different than this? What you do is you say this one is R1 and this one's R2, or R100 and R101. right? And basically, that's how we can start to notate these things. So let's go into the annotation menu first. 
Uh, we're going to just leave it on the numbering system to start at zero, right? So the first free number after zero in this case, so that'll be R1, R2, or C1, C2, that kind of thing. One thing I really like doing and something to, to investigate in future, uh, you know, in future boards that you make, I like doing uh, this, the here, where you start uh, at 100. So it'd be, in this case, it wouldn't be R1, it'd be R101. And I think that's a great way to get started, especially as you start to add more sheets. If you have hierarchical sheets, again, you, this is an advanced topic, but uh, definitely consider that in the future. Everything else we're gonna leave, uh, we're gonna leave default here. We're gonna do the entire schematic, we're gonna sort by X position, and we're gonna keep the existing annotations of which there are none yet. All right, so I hit annotate, you see now R1, R2, R, R, C1, and then R3, and I think that actually even matches the schematic that we had online, which is great. All right, so now we should be able to run ERC here. All right, so uh, we see some of these errors that we were talking about here. So let's start with this one. So this is pins connected to other pins, but no pin to drive it. That's because pin one and pin eight were both marked as power inputs. Now what we could do is we can go in and we can modify BT1. I'm guessing this is actually not, uh, not showing as power output for these things, and that's okay. So if we went into properties, edit with library editor, yeah, you see these are both marked as passive. So we could also go back in and mark as passive. I'm just gonna leave these be. Now, the no pin to drive it um, uh, flags that are here, those are warnings. You really don't have to worry about them, you know, but there are, um, you know, you can start to chase those down if you want to. You can also do something called a power flag. You know, and where is that? That's actually in, uh, that is in here. You need to, oops. We need to go and create, we can do power flag. And we can also notate this. This actually should make this, uh, those errors go away there. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you one way to make it actually happen. Let's go back into ERC. Yeah, so now those errors went away there. Basically showing, yes, these are power inputs and they're being weird. Now, the other one though, this is actually uh, a, a much more uh, important error and this is saying, hey, you haven't hooked up one of the pins on your diagram. Now, like I said, in this case, we didn't want to hook up this pin, but there's, <laughs> like I said, uh, I did make that mistake in the past, but we, uh, sometimes you don't want to, right? So sometimes you have a 30 pin device and you're only using 10 of them. And that happens all the time in electronics, but you want to tell the schematic, hey, that's okay. We don't need to do this here. So let's go into here. We're going to say the no connect pin. We're going to close this. We're going to say no connect. We're going to put that onto the pin here. And now when we rerun ERC, we should have all of our errors gone. Basically now it's just telling the schematic, hey, I, I'm okay, you don't need to hook this pin up here. All right, so we have our schematic. Let's just double check it once again. Like I said, it's really important to double check your schematic, double check, triple check, do all these things. It does look like all of our, uh, our pin numbers match up here. So this is all feeling good. And uh, we're ready to take this on to the next step here. If, speaking of the next step, if you are interested in all this stuff, you know, this is part of Contextual Electronics. That's an online program. We teach you how to do layout, but we also teach you a lot more. Teach you about what a resistor is, what a capacitor is, why would you would care about any of these values in the first place, and really how to pair together theory and practice. So if you're interested about that, go over to contextualelectronics.com. There's also a forum, forum.contextualelectronics.com, where you can learn more about all this stuff. In the next video, we're going to actually be pairing up these symbolic, uh, these symbolic things with the uh, physical, which is the, called the footprint. And we'll put all those things together here. So if you have any questions, you can always go over to the forum or hit, hit the, uh, the notation, <laughs> the YouTube comments down below. Thanks for watching.